morning and a very warm welcome to our service this morning. And welcome to any visitors we have here and those who are watching online. And thank you to Andy, our minister, who is leading our worship this morning. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Helen. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you once again. Um, I would like to start today's service with just um, a moment's silence to, uh, to think of, of Janet Jarman, who passed away uh, last week. Um, uh, Janet was a beloved member of this church, and, uh, and so I just want to hold silence and, and remember her. So, loving God, we give you thanks for the lives of your departed servants who are with you in heaven. And today we remember Janet with fondness and love. We ask your blessing upon her now in your presence. And may your comfort and peace be with her family and with all who mourn, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do come in, please don't, uh, yeah, don't stand waiting, do come in. It's uh, lovely to see everyone. And I want to wish you all a very happy Easter. Yes, yes you can wish me happy Easter as well, if you want. Um, Easter, uh, Easter was not just for one day, Easter is not just for one week. We still celebrate Easter today because Jesus is still risen and our Easter goes on. Jesus has died for us. He rose again and he lives forever. He has died our death on the cross so that we don't ever need to be afraid of death. We are with him and he is with us and the new life of his resurrection shows that he will be with us forever. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said, do not be afraid. The, pr um, the price is paid. Our sins are forgiven. The new covenant is here. The victory is won. God has won, love has won, Christ has conquered, and whatever else this world says, we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. And so we're going to sing uh, an Easter hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. And during this hymn, um, I've, I've hidden um, around the church six eggs um, that I invite the children um, to, to go and find six plastic eggs. Don't look in this tree decoration here because there's lots of eggs there. It's not those eggs, but there are six other um, plastic Easter eggs that you can find um, during this hymn. And if you could not open them yet, but bring them to the front, uh, then, that would be, um, uh, then that would be great. So we're going to sing together, 297, Christ is Alive.
And so let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all life, in the beauty of this new day and the joy of this Easter season, we praise you for all your goodness to us. Lift our hearts as we worship you this morning. Banish the gloom of death, illness and strife. Fill us with the light of your gospel hope and the joy of the victory of Christ. Forgive us, we pray, when we have lived as if you were not there, when we have forgotten the good news of Easter, or when we have been overwhelmed or disheartened by a Good Friday world. Bless us, we pray, with the new life of your kingdom. Help us to see beyond our present circumstances and hold on to the peace of your eternity, even here and now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. We say it together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So, thank you children <laughs> for, um, for leaving this pile of eggs here. Uh, well done, Phoebe, for a one-girl Easter egg hunt. Um, um, would anyone like to open them and, um, and tell, us what they, tell us what they say? Uh, Phoebe, do you want to come and open one? So in these eggs, um, what, um, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm not going to juggle with them, Okay, but um, what we're going to do is, um, uh, Ben, would you like to open one? No? no? Oh, well, oh. Sure, sure you would. Right, so if you, um, if you open them, and then would anyone else like to open one? And, uh, and tell us, uh, and you get to keep whatever's in it. Oh, here's, here's one. There you go. And um, we've got one left. Ivan's a big kid, really. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so, so if you open them and 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 read out what's what's in them, because um, what? Uh, okay, if you can tell me what it says. Who are, Who are you looking for? Okay, what does yours say? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Ian. Okay, thank you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Why, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Um, uh, Arthur, have you got one? Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Ivan. Why are you frightened and why do you doubt? Okay, why are you frightened and why do you doubt? So what do you think those words are? Um, are they things, yes, yes they are. They're all words of Jesus and, and they're all things he said on the day of his resurrection. They're all things he said to his disciples on the day of his resurrection, on, on the first Easter Sunday. Um, you can keep the little chocolate eggs, but if I could have the plastic ones back, then I can use them again. So um, just um, if you don't mind. But um, um, so they're all things that Jesus said on, on the first Easter Sunday. Who were you looking for? Why are you afraid? Why are you frightened and why do you doubt? Do not be afraid. Um, he said, peace be with you. 
Um, there was another one as well. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The message Jesus wanted his disciples to hear, because they were very frightened, they were, you know, they were very confused um, on that Easter day, just like they were on Good Friday and on the Saturday when they were very sad that he was quite clearly dead. Um, but on the Easter Sunday, Jesus spoke to them again, and he said these words to them. Um, he wanted them not to be afraid. He wanted them to know God's peace. Um, he wanted them, as the Father had sent him, so he was sending them to share um, his message with the world. And so he was asking them, why are you why are you crying? Because you don't need to. Um, uh, why are you afraid? Um, you don't need to be. Because God is with us. Jesus is with us. Um, and Jesus has beaten uh, all of the things that we might be afraid of. Such as even death. And so, uh, so on that Easter day, that was the message Jesus wanted them to hear. And, uh, and it's good news. It's something we should remember, not just on, on one day of the year, on Easter Sunday, but every day, Jesus is still risen. Uh, although we go through the, um, the pattern of Lent and, 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 and Holy Week and, and Good Friday every year, we go through that again to remind us what happened. And it's important to go through that period. Jesus is always risen. He doesn't die again every year. He's always risen, and he always wants us to hear those words of peace and comfort. And so we're going to sing now. Um, uh, and I'm going to play this on the piano because it's one of my favorites. And, um, uh, and this is called, He Has Risen, He Has Risen. I'm sure you'll remember it. And, uh, and let's sing together and praise God.
we're going to hear now our first gospel reading for today. Thank you. This is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Amen. Thank you for that reading, Kath. That reading takes place on the first Easter day in the evening. There had been the excitement of mourning. Mary Magdalene, the empty tomb, the first glimmer of good news as Mary rushes back to tell the others. Then the two disciples racing to get there and looking where the body had been. The folded grave clothes, the wonder, the glimmers of hope and belief, the awestruck disciples returning home while Mary weeps in the garden, confused. And then she sees angels, she sees Jesus, he speaks her name. And there, Mary's story disappears from our view. Then we start to concentrate on the 11 remaining disciples, the ones Jesus called and set apart just three years before, the ones who followed him with boldness until things started to go wrong. And when things fell apart, they fell away, abandoning him, saving themselves, denying even knowing him. Only one of them was seen at the foot of the cross, witnessing the fear and danger, the pain and reality of this life, where goodness and holiness and love came up against corruption, hatred, and imperial power. We have four resurrection accounts in John 20, Matthew 28, Mark 16, and Luke 24, and they all have their differences. But two things are consistent. Firstly, the fear, the confusion, the disbelief of the disciples. It takes a lot to break through what they've been through. They've been hurt. They've been devastated. Their world has ended as far as they were concerned. Their faith has been shaken. They have put, and they've put around themselves a protective shell They've locked themselves away. But the second consistent thing is the message from the angels and from the risen Jesus himself. And listen to how it begins. Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Why are you troubled and why are you afraid? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Who are you looking for? Why are you crying? Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. 
there's something very real about the disciples' state of mind. There's something real about the unbelief and the struggle. Their doubts and fear are not some terrible crimes against faith. Their doubts and fear make it real for us because we might experience that in our own lives. But equally important are the words of comfort given to them. Jesus finds a way to break through their barriers. He finds a way to crack their protective shell. He stands among them in the locked room. He offers them peace. He shows them it really is him, scars and all. It's not some glorious hallucination or dream. It's him who really went through all that pain. He invites them to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, even then on that Easter day. And he gives them, as his newborn church, permission and authority to forgive the sins of any or to withhold that forgiveness. And they'll need all of those things in this real world, in this painful world. They'll need God's peace. They'll need the memory of his risen living body. They'll need the Holy Spirit. And they'll need to forgive. Because it's still a world of pain and turmoil and sin and grief. A world of innocent victims, foolish mistakes, war, famine, corruption, illness and death. For me, Thomas is a hero in this story. So often painted as a flawed disciple. And yet his questions, in his questions and doubts, we might see ourselves. Thomas makes it real. Thomas says the things we sometimes dare not ask. Doubting Thomas, history has called him. Doubting Thomas. Why do we define him by a moment of doubt rather than a life of faith? Why can't we see past his doubt and call him believing Thomas? Are we a religion frightened of people asking questions or admitting their doubts and true feelings? Maybe we have been. Maybe we're starting to be less so. And that's before we mention the fate of Judas, the unspoken one, the one who wasn't there, the one who doesn't get a mention in this passage. Judas, misunderstood, painted as the world's greatest traitor. Judas, who showed the utmost remorse and begged to reverse his decision and took his despair into his own hands. I wonder what grace and forgiveness would have awaited him from Jesus. For I am convinced that in those last moments for Judas, he committed his life, his mistakes and sins into the hands of God I'm convinced that God loves him too. I'm convinced that he too will be with Jesus in paradise. Because would Jesus really have it any other way? And despite Jesus' words about forgiveness to his disciples in this very passage, the church has never officially forgiven or pardoned Judas. Yet what sort of message would that give to the world? What floodgates of grace might open if we did? 
Thomas in a moment's doubt, Judas in a misguided betrayal, Peter in a threefold denial. We might try to hide our mistakes and our shame, but the Bible doesn't. We might label people forever as doubter, traitor, coward, but thank God, Jesus doesn't. The real and risen Jesus can cope with our doubts. He can cope with our questions. He can cope with our fears and insecurities, our mistakes and our regrets. He knows all too well the real world. The real world that hung his battered, his battered body on a cross to die. Jesus who wrestled in Gethsemane with the suffering that was to come and who cried out in honest desolation on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knew the complexities of faith in an evil world. He understands. I want to pause there for us to reflect on that as we worship him now, as we sing together. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. <coughs> Of that reading. Thank you, Malcolm. This second gospel reading is from John chapter 20, starting at verse 26. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm. 
So one week later, and here we are at the second Sunday of Easter, Jesus appeared again, and this time Thomas was with them, and Jesus wanted to give Thomas that same assurance that his friends had had, and Thomas could now share their faith with confidence. He could now kneel in awe and worship and declare, my Lord and my God. It was a very certain moment. Although I do wonder whether sometimes in later months and later years, if their minds would play tricks on them and they would forget how real that moment was. It can be easy to forget the assurance, the God moment, to forget how real it once felt to us. It's a good job they had each other to remind them. The fellowship of the church is so important. On our own, in this world of pain and evil, temptation and tiredness, we can dismiss the God moments we have known. We can dismiss them as just a phase, a fading memory. But together, when we encourage one another, when we lift one another up, when we sing, even when we don't feel like it, when we reach out to touch the bread of Christ's body and the precious wine of his blood, maybe it gives us just enough of a reminder, just enough assurance, enough encouragement to get through another week. Give us this day our daily bread. And then we are the ones, Jesus says, are blessed. We who hold on to that resurrection faith, that living hope, that awesome love, even though we don't see him. We who do it because we've experienced something once. We've known God through prayer. We've known God through the love of others. We've known God always in our lives from childhood because God has always been there or because God came to us in a revelation or a conversion later in life. Jesus says we are the ones who are blessed even though we don't see him. He knew there would be many like us and he doesn't appear to us all in the same way. He doesn't come into our lives in the same way. But we're invited to believe and trust in the testimony of those who went before. Those first disciples, like the gospel writer we know as John, who wrote it down so that we might believe in Christ and receive the life he gives us, even now, even in this very real, often painful and distressing world. There is something very powerful about the Easter message for Christians around the world. And there's something very powerful about that Easter proclamation that in whatever language brings hope, courage, and joy, whatever the circumstances. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our Ukrainian friends, now in their third Easter here, taught me their Easter greeting. Christos Voskres, which means Christ is risen. And the response to which is Voistinu Voskres. Indeed, he is risen. But think about that. Our Ukrainian friends. Can you imagine them saying that at Easter in towns and cities devastated by Putin's war? Well, they do. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Can you imagine them saying that on Easter Sunday in 1941 in England, in London, in Coventry, during the Blitz, among the ruins of bombed churches and cathedrals? Can you imagine it? Well, they did. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Can you imagine them saying that in Gaza City last weekend as a number of brave Palestinian Christians gathered for mass? Well, they did. And they said, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our circumstances, our worries, and the pain of this world do not alter the fact that Christ is risen and God is good, even though we might have trouble understanding it at times. Part of the defiant courage of our faith is to proclaim the hope of Easter against the forces of evil in this world. Despite it all, we will say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus truly died a violent and humiliating death in a real world. His resurrection didn't instantly change this world of fear and danger. But it can begin to change us, our hearts and minds, our courage, our hope, our determined love and faith, our determination for a better world, our joy despite the griefs of this world. Jesus comes in the midst, and in the midst of it all, he can help us find hope, love, peace with God, joy despite our circumstances, and faith, Faith that God has not finished with this world. Faith that God is active in the world. Faith that God's love will win through. We might like to ask ourselves, how would our faith be different if Jesus was still dead? How would our faith be different if Jesus was still dead? If all we did was to remember a dead man beaten by the forces of evil. If all we did was to learn from his teachings and commemorate his death, what would our faith look like? It's an interesting question. What would our faces look like as we sat in worship? Would they look any different to yours that I'm seeing this morning? Sorry, I'm joking. (laughs) What would our faces look like as we sat in worship? How would we dress? How would we greet one another if Christ was dead? What sort of solemn and somber behavior would we expect in church? How would we share our faith? How would we pray? Would we even have any hope of life beyond this one? Or would we just be hoping that we could be good enough to earn favor from a distant and unknown God? How would it be different if Christ was dead? If that sums up our faith, then perhaps we need to think again. The resurrection should make a difference. The one who was crucified for us is risen. He is alive. He invites us to be one with him and share his risen life. He wants to be with us, to walk with us, to be our companion, our courage, 
our strength against the storm. He asks us to build one another up and to try to find unspeakable joy. Joy in the fact that he has won the victory. Death is defeated. His kingdom of love is coming and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. May our hearts and our lives and our worship reflect this. And remember, our communion is not a memorial, but a celebration. For the risen Jesus is with us. There are times when we all need building up, putting back together, restoring, forgiving, encouraging. Through good times and bad, we will weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. But we have a saviour and he's alive and he calls us to be Easter people all year round. People living and dying and rising with the living Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. I originally had in mind a different hymn to follow this sermon, but then this one came to mind, and it's not in our hymn book, and it's not in our previous hymn book, and I must have remembered singing it in Sunday school, um, but uh, it's, a, it's a good one, and I hope that some of you will know it. Uh, but it reminds us that we do not serve a dead saviour, because a dead saviour is no saviour at all. But we serve a risen saviour. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. We sing together.
for many of us. <laughs> Let's turn to God in prayer as we pray to our Lord Jesus for the world and the church he loves. Let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, we pray for the world you love, a world in pain, in turmoil, in strife. We pray for our planet hurting and struggling in the effects of our misuse. We pray for the victims of senseless wars where human life is deemed to be less important than political gain. We pray for all who live with the threat of conflict, all who starve, all who must watch their families suffer, all who live in fear, and for all who live in poverty. May your healing, your compassion and aid come to them. We pray for refugees on the move and for the victims of disaster. We pray for all who lead the nations for wisdom and compassion. We pray for those who live with the wounds of the past pray for those who live with the hurts of their own mistakes or the sins of others. We pray for all who care for loved ones, for the sick and injured at home or in hospital, for those receiving treatment for cancer and long-term illnesses. We pray for all who are bereaved and for those close to death. By your risen power, bring your healing, bring your forgiveness, bring your grace and peace your comfort and compassion and let your love be known as we, your church, share your gospel with the world. The cross is bare, the tomb is empty, your love will win in the end and in that love we are saved. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And we share peace with one another. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia. Let's greet one another with a sign of God's peace.
And so we stand as we dedicate our offering to God. Let us pray. Loving and generous God, we bring to you these our gifts and these our prayers for the life of your kingdom here on earth. Help us to be your servants, servants of the risen King, and may we go with joy and serve you in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we prepare for communion, we sing together the day of resurrection, earth tell it out abroad. So as we come to Holy Communion, I want to say that everyone is very welcome, uh, whether you're new to church, um, new to the faith, or, um, or a visitor here, or whatever, uh, you're very welcome to share in the bread and the wine of Communion, if you would like to. Um, we take this as a way of receiving Christ, as a way of receiving something of God in our lives, of inviting God and the risen Christ to work in us, to work in our lives, whatever it is we need from God this morning, let us put our hands out to receive. All of our bread is gluten-free and our wine is non-alcoholic um, and no one is excluded from this worship. Um, and so um, and when it comes to it, we will uh, distribute the bread and wine to you in your seats um, so, so we'll come round. If you'd prefer not to receive, then just keep your hands closed or tell us as we come round, uh, and that's fine, and we will offer you a blessing instead. Um, but, but everyone is welcome to receive. And we come now to give thanks to God. And so, with the words on the screen, let us pray. The Lord be with you. 
Let's raise our hearts and lives to God. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God, our Saviour. We bring our thanks and praise. Alleluia. Gracious God, we thank you for your everlasting love. Love that created us. Love that forgives us. Love that does not die. We thank you for sending Jesus into the world as light and life, as Lord and King, as our healer and redeemer. We thank you that death could not hold him and his love and life burst from the tomb, a ray of hope that will renew all things. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, we remember that on the night before you died, you shared supper with your friends. In a house, around a table, you gave them bread and wine, your body broken, your blood poured out, a sign of God's new relationship with the world. We remember too that in the days after your resurrection, you broke bread with them again, and you meet with us today in your risen power. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Spirit, God with us, as we share this bread and wine, a precious taste of things to come, may you feed us and forgive us through the saving love of God. Come to us in this moment that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him. Fill our lives with your grace and send us out to be your people in the world. All blessing and honour be yours, loving God, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in your risen life. Come, risen King of kings. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And I invite those who are assisting with communion or with the music to come and receive first.
And so we pray with the words on the screen. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we thank you for our communion with the risen Christ and with all who love him in earth and heaven. We pray that strengthened by his we may serve you faithfully all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing together our final hymn, Thine be the glory risen conquering Son, number 313. God, the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And may almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Go in joy and peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.